My name is Eric Lontok. I'm the Chief Science Officer of the Lipedema Foundation, and I really want to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak with you today. The title of my talk is Frontiers of Lipedema Research. So I have no financial disclosures. Now, our mission at the Lipedema Foundation, or LF, is to define, diagnose, and develop treatments for lipedema. And we've been around since 2015, and since then we've committed over $5 million towards lipedema research, and it's this program that I'd like to talk with you about today. And I'm really happy that my talk followed Polly's, because I was like, oh, awesome, cool, covers clinical research perfectly. But if you take a moment and you imagine all of the information in disease research, clinical research is only one part, and that's research that involves humans. What goes hand in hand with clinical research is basic research, and that's where you're trying to understand what, are the, what causes or drives of the disease. And this information involves you know, animals or bench research, you know, which I'm trying to show with that little pipette over there. And alongside that information, you'd also try to capture the patient experience or what is the quality of life of these patients that have a disease and what are their symptoms. In an ideal world, all three of these, the clinical, the basic, and the patient experience, would then go into feed into the clinical guidelines or how medical professionals would diagnose or treat a particular disease. Now, for lipedema, we have a fair amount, you know, we have some clinical research, and as Polly had noted, a lot of his case reports, just small numbers of individuals. And we definitely have fantastic patient advocates who have really tried to capture that patient quality of life in surveys and then publish them in journals. And we've been fortunate to have clinical guidelines come out of the UK, from the Netherlands, and Germany. But if you notice in all of this, what we're really lacking is basic research. Like, where is it? What's going on? What are those causes? What are those drivers? And it's in this space that the Lipedema Foundation has really decided to make its mark. And the way that we've approached this is, if lipedema occurs in fat tissue, well then, what's in fat tissue? Right? We should really be thinking about all of the residents in fat tissue and really trying to study them. So I encourage you to please go to lipedema.org and learn about all of our funded research. And if you click on each resident in fat tissue, you'll find out about the labs that are studying them. So at LF, we also really focus on the disease state by encouraging the use of patient samples. And what this means is, what is different, what makes lipedema fat different from regular fat? And we do this, and we, we do this by supporting research that really involves patients and patient samples, because if we focus on that, then it's likely that anything that is found or any results that are identified are then really clinically relevant. And in fact, if you look across our 24 grantees, 19 involve patients or patient samples, and you'll hear more about that from Sarah and um, Karen later on. Six involve imaging or diagnostic tools for di patient diagnosis, and you'll hear about Shelley's diagnostic tool right after. And four involve genetic studies that, will, uh, that are trying to identify genes that drive disease, and you'll hear about Jan's genetics talk right at, at the very end of the session. The second thing that we really focus on, if, um, the second thing that we really focus on is that we really encourage collaboration. And what we mean by this is that researchers are willing to share unpublished research results with one another. At the same time that if you are able to collect patient samples, that you're willing to share them with other researchers who may be interested in testing those samples. And a big part of what I do is really trying to facilitate discussions. What I mean by that is just making sure that the researchers talk to one another. Right? Because if you're finding out your results and you're able to discuss them in real time with another person who's interested in it, you can really see the, po the, potential, po like the potential impact of that. And I think a, an effort at LF that really kind of captures all of this is a project that we're calling the 25 Cohort. And what this collaboration involves is three clinical teams from the University of Arizona with Karen and her battery of tests the Vanderbilt sodium MRI that you'll hear from Shelley, and Ava Sevix Nerfly, which we, had learned, which we had heard about in 2016, that images the lymphatic system. Beyond, besides, aside from these clinical research members, we also have a dedicated uh, component of basic research where we have researchers from UT Southwestern and Tulane who are thinking about what's going on with these adipocytes or these fat cells and the stem cells that lead to these fat cells. All right. um, we also have researchers from the University of Chicago that are studying interstitial fluid, which if you think, if, if I imagine it as if you have, it's the liquid that kind of 
washes and rinses these cells in the tissue. And they also study immune cells that are present in that fluid and exosomes. And exosomes are like little packets of information that cells send to one another to communicate. And then we have Ben Arroyo Research Institute that's taught thinking about the extracellular matrix. If you remember from Karen's talk, she mentioned hyaluronic acid. That's a component of the extracellular matrix. And I think of the matrix as, it's like the clothing that cells wear. And BRI alongside Texas A&M is also studying fibrosis or the level of scarring of these tissues. Um, and since we know that there's a pain component, they're very interested in the nerve um, status in these tissues and really trying to understand what these cells best look like in slides, because we just heard from Polly, how you prep your slides really makes a difference. And so what, what, all I'm gonna do here is I've circled all of those topics that they're studying, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that image from the background. So how this 25 cohort works is that if you have researchers that are all studying this, it'll start with Karen performing diagnosis and having all of these study participants go through her battery of tests. And then she will collect patient samples, and then these samples and these patients will then go to all of these collaborators, these uh, women that I'm showing here in the multiple different colors. And these patients and their samples will then go to each one of these collaborators. And the, the, the really awesome thing about this is that now we can test many research ideas at the very same time with the same group of people. And the value of this is that let's imagine that this lymphatic researcher says, you know what, I found this really cool result in this red individual. I wonder what's going on with their adipocytes, what's going on with their fibrosis, what's going on in their imaging. And all that that lymphatic researcher would have to do is then contact those researchers and like, hey, tell me about that red individual. Did you find any differences in their adipocytes or so on? And the best part is, if they really do find something that rings true for that one individual, since this cohort all were, were all tested the same way, sent their samples to all the same sites, now they can ask, all right, if that results in that red individual, what's going on in the green individual? What's going on in the blue individual? So as we've been going through all of this, and, and you know, in, in every kind of research effort, you can see that it's really important that the clinicians, the researchers, and the surgeons are really working together. But to make things like the 25 cord and really any clinical study in lipedema is that we need patients to act as that study participants, to act as potential members of the 25 cord. And we need a lot of you. Like, no joke, like a lot of you. Um, and the way that we at LF are going to approach this is that today, we, we, we want to engage with you and let you know that we plan on launching a patient registry in mid-2018. And the goal of this registry is... <laughs> yeah, awesome, great. And, and the goal of this registry is to learn more about your first-hand experience with, with lipedema or Durkheim's or lymphedema. And at the same time, to be able to engage individuals that are interested in participating in research. So what is a patient registry? All it is is a place to store information about a group of individuals that have a particular disease or syndrome like lipedema. And if you decided to join the patient registry, what we would get to learn is that if you have lipedema and shared your information, we get to find out exactly how many of you have lipedema, because let's be honest. In the US, we have no idea. And at the same time, if, you started, if, you, if you're willing to participate and share your information, we get to find out about your symptoms on a much larger scale. We get to find out whether or not there's a family background associated with your disease. Does your sister have it? Does your mom have it? Does your grandmother have it? Because if we think lipedema is genetic and it's passed on from one family to another, this is how we can better find out who are those people that we can really focus on for genetic studies. We get to find out about your medical history and your comorbidities, which are diseases that are present in the same individual. And most importantly, we get to find out about the treatments that you've tried, what has worked and what hasn't. So as we've been building this registry and really you know, finalizing the mechanics behind it, we've really taken the time to hear from our researchers who are doing that basic research, the clinicians that are diagnosing and treating these individuals, the surgeons who are helping collect patient samples and share them and distribute them for research. But today, I really wanna take a moment and ask you, 
and hear from you and to find out you know, if you go to lipidema.org slash registry right now, I, I actually just checked, the link is live, so it'll work. Um, what are the questions that you want the registry to ask? What are the things that you would want to learn most about your community? And most importantly, what are your questions about participating in research? Because ultimately, we want to build this registry not just for you, but with you. Thank you. <laughs>